So let's start by taking a look at some of the steel detailing capabilities in Revit 2020. So in the previous release of Revit, Revit 2019, Autodesk introduced the new steel ribbon. And this gave us the ability not only to put on the standard connections that ship with Revit, but also to be able to create our own custom connections. Now, you could have done that in two different ways. You could have taken a standard connection and exploded it into its component parts. So you could have created plates, bolts, holes, welds, and so on. And then you could modify those and create your own custom connection from that. Or you could model the custom connection from first principles yourself. So this is really extending the level of detail that we could go down to with our steel modeling. So in the 2020 release, we have a huge improvement in the way that the connections are managed and placed around the structure. So let's start with um, something called propagate. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in to this particular connection. Now, if I select the connection here, you can see that I've got a shear plate in there. However, you'll now notice that I've got different types of connection or uh, in here that I can apply. So, for example, I could go down through there and say, well, actually, I want the one for the square hollow section or I want my standard connection in there. Now, how that works is I can click on this. I can do edit type and I can then duplicate the connection. But the difference here from 2019 is that you can see that I can modify the parameters of my connection. So if I go through here and we have a shear plate connection type three, for example, I'm now going to go and modify my parameters. So in here, we can go to our plates and bolts. And in this example here, I'm going to have two rows of bolts in here. If I go to my vertical bolts, I'll reduce those to say four and we'll have a spacing of 150. So let's go ahead and say okay to that. And okay again. So now you can see that we have a double row of bolts, but let's go through some of the different connections we've got now. So from my same shear plate connection, I have my five bolt I have my six bolt, but again, still a single line of bolts, or I can go for my new type three that I've just created. And you can now see we can store all of those in the project. So it's incredibly useful. Okay, let's go back to the standard six bolt arrangement in here. Of course, what I would probably want to do is take that same connection and propagate it throughout the structure. So any areas where we have the square hollow section column meeting this universal beam, I want Revit to go and put that connection on. So I can right mouse click over this. And here you'll notice I've got a new function called propagate connection. So let's go ahead and propagate that through the structure. And there we are. You can now see that Revit has added that connection to all of the other areas where we had the same condition of the square hollow section column meeting that particular section of universal beam. Yeah. Now, as well as processing and putting those connections on, Revit has used background processing to very quickly update and change all of those. If I right click here, what I'm going to now do is select all instances of that connection and you can now see that we've got all of those connections selected and of course I can go back through my type selector just as we would for any other Revit element and start to change things yeah so if I decide that I wanted the type 3 connection again it's changed all the instances of that connection so that's incredibly useful very quick and easy okay so let's have a look at another example of that Perhaps what we'll do is we'll have a look at a connection or putting a connection in between this primary beam here and these two secondaries over here. So let's go to our structure ribbon, click on connection, make a selection set of the elements we want to connect over here. Search for our connection type. So I'll just do a clip connection in here and you can see I've got one here, double sided clip angle and press enter to accept that parameter. Okay, so you can now see that Revit's put the connection in. So I'm quite happy with that. So I want to now just go ahead and propagate that to all of the other areas around the structure. So once again here, I can right mouse click, propagate connection. Now you can see that Revit 2020 is now background processing that 
I love the background processing. What it means is I can continue to work and start to get on with some other um, tasks whilst that's processing in the background and adding those connections to all of the relevant um, areas here. Okay, so now you can see that all of the connections have now been added through. And if I want to see how many it's added in, I can just right mouse here, select all instances visible in view, and you can see that it's added 48 connections through. So if we now go up to the next level and then the next level up here, you can see all those double sided clip angles have been added effortlessly to the model. So really, really useful stuff. So on the concrete side of things, we have a couple of new features as well as enhancements to existing functionality. So I'm going to start off with a couple of enhancements first, and these are going to be to multi-rebar annotations or MRAs. So let's start off with this plan view here. So you can see here that I have a range of reinforcement bar. If I select it, you'll see the range here, Yep, starting from here and here. And currently it doesn't have an MRA to detail it. So I'm going to go ahead and create similar on this one. I shall select my MRA. And traditionally, you can see here that it will give you the range of reinforcement bar here, but you wouldn't be able to actually then include the edge of formwork. So what I can now do is pick the edge of formwork here, place the MRA down, and then of course place the tag out in the traditional way. Yeah. So you can see there, that's a much nicer way of calling up the reinforcement bar and incorporating the distance from the end of the range to the formwork. Staying on that type of theme here, if we go into the 3D view, you can see here that I have an inclined face and reinforcement bar running across that inclined face. If I open up the section view on this, Traditionally, it would have been quite difficult to call up that freeform reinforcement on that face. But again here, we can use an MRA. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the aligned multi-rebar annotation. Select the reinforcement bar, uh, place the MRA down, and then place the tag out. So nice and easy to do that now. Okay, so another new feature I'd like to show you actually came out in a point release in 2019, but it's worth including within this video. So here you can see that we have a ramp. Now, if I select the ramp, you can see here that we can go to rebar. Now, I'm saying this is a ramp, but actually I've modeled this as an in situ component and configured it as a stair. Now, in this version of Revit, you can reinforce and detail an in situ staircase. So in this case, I've just taken a ramp in to show you this. So if I select uh, reinforcement now, I'm gonna start off by showing you the aligned reinforcement. So what I'm gonna do here is pick the host for my reinforcement and then the path. So we'll go ahead and accept that rebar and you can now see that Revit has placed a single bar in so of course we can go to the rebar set, select our layout rules. In this case, I'm gonna use maximum spacing in here. And we can then set a suitable spacing, perhaps 300, and that's done. Let's select the ramp again, and we're gonna get the next layer of reinforcement bar in. So we'll click rebar once again. This time I'm gonna use surface reinforcement. So we'll select our host face up over here, and the side faces, like so. And again, place a single bar in. Now, once again, just like you've seen before, I can then take that single bar, go ahead and create a range using these layout rules and set the spacing to what I desire. Now, what I really like about this new feature is here, you can see because this ramp has a very large radius, in fact, that reinforcement bar is probably going to be delivered on site a straight bar and it will simply deflect as we fix it around the ramp. So you can see here that I have this workshop instruction and you can see at the minute that we've got keep straight. So we can say I'd like to bend it or keep it straight. And if I keep it straight, you can see that the shape code is then zero, zero. And if we come down and look at the um, the lengths here, you can see that obviously it's varying because of the, uh, the the radial arrangement of those reinforcement bars. But that's actually giving me the straight uh, length of that reinforcement. So obviously when I fix that, that will then make sense on site. We can also edit the constraints in 3D as well. So if I select that same piece of reinforcement here, um, what I might want to do is obviously edit the constraint and then I can decide to put that in a different layer um, if required like that, and then hit the finish tool. 
So quite a nice tool there. So now we have the ability to copy and paste and mirror reinforcement bar with much more certainty. So what I'm really saying about that is if we take a look over here, you'll see that we've got uh, a beam. Now previously, if I decided to copy that reinforcement bar from this beam into some of those other elements there, you may have found that new rebar numbers were created. And that's because the actual reinforcement bar could detect a slightly different edge or a different cover face, or indeed, because I have another component that's joined to that beam in a slightly different way, again, that could affect the reinforcement bar. So Autodesk have spent a lot of time in this release making sure that we have a consistent and nice way of copying, mirroring, rotating, and nudging reinforcement bar so it doesn't create these additional bar marks that we don't want. So I'm just gonna show you that in plan. So you can see here that I have that reinforcement bar showing in plane. So we'll just go ahead and select that re rebar in there. We'll go to the copy command and we'll copy this reinforcement through. Like so. Now actually, I'm just gonna leave two copies there. If I go and open up a drawing sheet now, so we can see that we've got this beam laid out onto a drawing sheet here. What we're interested in here is the bar bending schedule. So when we look through the bar bending schedule, you'll see I've got bar marks one through to six, and I have two members uh, uh, showing in there, as well as the total weight of the rebar. So if we now go back to our plan, and we select the reinforcement bar again. Yep, let's go back to copy, and we'll put another copy down in here. Let's now switch back to our sheet. You can now see we've still got six bar marks in there, but now we have three members and of course the weight's increased. So what I really like about this is Autodesk have actually made it much easier to place reinforcement bar around the structure. So rather than having to be very careful about how we copy and manipulate the reinforcement bar, we can now use a host of those modify tools to very quickly place that bar around. Okay, so that concludes the majority of the new features in 2020. I do want to show you at a later stage how we can use Dynamo to place out structural connections and also how we can use Dynamo to adjust the analytical model of Revit. Okay, thanks for listening.